When a cowgirl is happy, she plays her guitar. The yodel, yodel, hitches her heart to a bright shining star. The yodel, give her a trail and a pinto pal and give her a hunk of moon. You'll hear heart beating rhythm to a cowgirl tune. When a cowgirl is happy, she plays her guitar. The yodel, you see, a lot of people live for social emotional. I live for figuring out how to do stuff with my mind and making a project work. I'm like pure geek, pure logic. I'm Temple Grandin. This is my desk. I am professor of animal science at Colorado State University. We are the rams, we are not the bisons. We're trying to clean things out because we're gonna to have to move out of our building. I've been de-junkifying my office. I do have, one of the very, very first papers I ever did were a thing called Innsminger's Stockman School. Yep, that's it right there. 1976, it's not my absolute first, but this was like I'd made it. I got fascinated with squeeze chutes and I just had to see how that worked. And then I started up my design business one little small project at a time. Okay, here is the drawing right here, the dip vat. I can remember when that dip vat worked and, the, and all the people were there from the magazine. They said, it, they told me it was a work of art. That was a really proud moment. And there's another drawing there. See, when I draw something like this, I can see the whole facility. I can see it in my mind as I draw it. It's like when I'm drawing that mesh catwalk, I am seeing that catwalk material. You see, I'm a visual thinker. And when I first started out, I didn't know that my thinking was different. And when I started getting insight into how my mind was different, that gave me insight. You know, I understood the animals because I'm thinking in a more sensory-based way. It made me look at what are the cattle seeing? Maybe a shadow looks like a hole in the ground. You see, when I first started doing this, I mean, that was like radical stuff. But I want you to dig about something that you actually are interested in. I want to try to get students to think. I also want to teach them how to be better observers. What are the ears of the animal doing? Which way is it looking? Which eye is it using? Is it swishing its tail? That's a sign that maybe the horse is getting upset. Be good observers. People always wonder, was the animal afraid of getting slaughtered? Well, I had to answer that question very early in my career. And I found they behaved the same way at the local swift plant as they behaved um, going up to shoot for veterinary work. And I'm amazed at the number of places I've fixed with things like cardboard and duct tape and some lights and some non-slip flooring. At a slaughter plant? I use the word slaughter. You know, call it a slaughter plant. We shouldn't be calling it a harvest facility. You know, harvesting is something you do with grain. There's a tendency now to want to just prettify things up. I mean, that goes along with the same thing like calling the garbage collector a sanitation engineer. Shooting directly to the captive bolt and destroy the brain. I read an awful thing about child abuse in factories where soccer balls were sown in a developing country. I can't look at a soccer ball the same way again. Oh, I think that's way worse than a slaughter plant. Oh, look at some of the stuff that people are looking at in the movies. That makes a slaughter plant look positively nice. This is something that I got back in the 70s. I started working on my first job. You're probably wondering what the heck this is. Now, of course, one of the things I was really, really interested in was the effect of pressure. You know, I had my squeezing machine, and the squeezing machine applied pressure and it calmed me down. So anything I applied pressure, I was fascinated with. And I had a guy come to me. He had built this thing to tame wild horses. And you put grain in here, so it's pressure all over. It actually did work, but it was really, really a uh, uh, Rube Goldberg contraption. And when we move to the new building, this will move to the new building. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I had no speech uh, until age four. When I was a little kid, I was pretty severe, but I did not have other severe medical signs like epilepsy and things like that. See, the problem you've got with something like autism is a little bit of the trait gives you a geeky engineer. Too much of the trait, and I, yeah, they're not going to be designing a Mars lander, that's for sure. It's like you take out a few social circuits, then you get geek circuits. Like I watch a couple of a boyfriend and girlfriend on the plane. They're doing Google eyes to each other, and they're just having such a great time. And I'm just sitting there observing. And I know that there's some circuits that are missing in me. But then on the other hand, I get all choked up. 
You know, like when they shut down the space shuttle and the NASA space scientists were crying, the ones that were my age. Well, you see, they are what they do. I don't think we value our geeks enough. The Chinese do. They're graduating probably about 20% of their graduates in things like engineering. You wouldn't have that camera if it wasn't for the geeks that made it. You know, the social people don't make nice cameras. What bothers me today is I'm seeing Junior that ought to be in a talented and gifted program, and he wants to come up and tell me about his autism instead of telling me about his science project. They're becoming their label. This is kind of a cool thing. So we've got to dust him off. I got him on my first trip to Australia in 1978. I went down and I saw how beautiful they did the meat plants and I got this ram. No, American plants have gotten really good now. And it was very interesting taking the executives from McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, and many, many other corporations on their first trips to farms and slaughter plants to watch an abstraction go to something real. Well, you see, with the McLibel case, there was a lawsuit where McDonald's sued a little environmental group in England for uh, a pamphlet that said basically they were wrecking the world. And uh, the environmental people won half the case. So McDonald's had to look at it. And that's where I got hired. You see, activists make heat. Heat softens steel. And then people like me can manipulate and bend that steel into pretty grill work. Yeah, well, the thing is, I went into a man's world. When I started out in the 70s, it was all guys. But maybe this is one thing that was good about being autistic and fixated and not picking up subtle social cues. Because as long as they didn't throw me out of the feed yard, I got to work with the cattle, I was happy. You see, autism's an important part of who I am, but it's secondary to being a professor of animal science, being a designer, being a scientist. That comes first. I don't want to stop being autistic because I love the logical way I think. But autism is secondary to what I do. I get interested in something. Get out and do stuff.